So today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, entrepreneurship. We got some um, polls for you here, so let me bring this up real quick. You can visit uh, the polls here on the slido.com and you can put in the, <clears throat> put in the code there. So Alex, why don't you start a little bit and tell the crowd a little bit about your story and background and how you got into entrepreneurship and how you got to where you are today. Uh, we were just talking about that in the, in the back behind the stage. Uh, so I'm an immigrant. I came from, uh, I was born in the Ukraine. I grew up in Israel. So I came here in 1988. And I was actually at the hall here in, uh, uh, in 90, 92, and then 95. Uh, back in the days of, uh, uh, I was in a telecom business, uh, kind of trying to disrupt the phone companies. If you remember, the phone companies used to charge us $3 a minute. Anyone here remembers paying 2 $3 a minute for international voice calls? Well, how much are you paying now? Zero. Zero. Right, so how do we go from three dollars a minute to zero? Who's responsible for that? I'll take full, full credit. <laughs> so, so I was just, I just looked at it and I said, that is just crazy. Like this is just not something, you know, seven, you know, back then I think we had six and a half billion people on the planet. Now we have seven and a half, but uh, there was just something that was completely unacceptable. And so I was lucky enough to be th at the right place at the right time, write the protocols, the, uh, the patents. So I, I hold the foundational patent for voice of IP in October 1994. Um, some people say, wait, I, I thought Jeff Palver invented VoIP. Um, so I was at the Jeff Palver conference in 1996, in October 96, in Boston as a keynote speaker talking about voice of IP. So, but that's not what we're here for. We're here really to uh, look at MOIP, money over IP. There's no reason why what we did for voice, what we did for seven billion people on the planet, we cannot do the same thing for money. You see, when David works real hard and he gets his paycheck, you pay yourself, right? So A little bit. But it doesn't matter. You still deposit it in the bank, right? And the bank then turns it around and lends me your money, right? So it's not the bank's money, it's your money, right? They, they, I charge my credit card, they, they, they basically charge me 25%, they pay you less than 1%. So they introduce you to me, they're just a broker, a toll collector, and they charge 95% of the value. They keep 24 out of 25%. Seems fair. Right? So if your real estate broker kept 90% of your house value when they sold it, or your insurance broker, would you work with them? Yet all of us are depositing all of our money every day with the same people that are stealing from us every day. And I'm just getting started saying bad things about banks. Yeah, I was gonna say, how do you, how do you really feel about banks? Why don't you just tell us, why don't you just start, start with that? What's your true so, feeling? So I practice on the phone companies. I, I won, the, the first battle was Voice of IP. Uh, I punched them out. My second battle was in the city of New York. Anyone here from New York? Any I'm doing you? polls on the screen, man. If you want to do your own polls, do them later. So I, 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 uh, I, you know, I use the subway every day, and and it just, you know, my phone just doesn't work in the subway, and I was like, that doesn't make any sense. And I went to the city, and I said, well, why don't you have phone service in the subway? And they're like, we've been around for a hundred years. You're not going to tell us what we do, what we don't do. We don't want any service in the subways, right? Did you guys notice you got started getting five bars everywhere, right? So I started a company called Transit Wireless. I fought with the city for 10 years. You know, it took another eight years to build it. And now 8 million people use the service every day for free. I got the phone companies to pay for it. Can I claim credit for that one? So the battle with the banks, I'm not here to brag. The battle with the banks is uh, the biggest battle of my life. It's not like a little battle, right? I mean, the banks are pretty good. They survived for 700 years. The first bank is Banco de Pachi from Siena, Italy. They were like, they kind of invented the idea that you can give them gold coins and they give you a piece of paper saying, hey, I owe you five gold coins. The note 
came from there. They were the first guys to invent that. And since then, all we did is move from coins to notes to digital money, right? Dollars are digital money. So it's really just the, the monopolization of that, right. of money. Right, but, but when I came to the United States in 1988, I deposited dollars with Citi. They paid me seven or eight percent. Anyone here still get seven or eight percent? How about one percent? Half of all the money JP Morgan holds does not pay any interest. They pay zero to their depositors on half, meaning 14 trillion dollars. They pay nothing on it. And it's most of us. It's most of us are too lazy or too busy to move our money from the checking account to the savings account. That's just daytime robbery. Now, JP Morgan doesn't work hard for the money. We work hard for the money. JP Morgan has their money work for them. We work for the money. It's just that simple. Okay, so what Celsius decided to do is something unheard of, right? What J they do? Yeah, unheard of. J I'll, I'll explain first what JP Morgan does. So this transaction, right? JP Morgan in the middle, keeping 90% of the value. Last year, 2018, JP Morgan made $30 billion in profit. Not revenues, profit. From all of us. Who did they give all that money to? Any of you received a check from JP Morgan? Anyone here? A couple shareholders. All that money goes as dividends to the shareholders, who are the richest people in America. Now, I'll admit it, I'm one of them, right? I'm a rich fuck. You're one of the richest people in America? I am. Nice. Okay? But, well, I'm, I mean that 33,000 people who are the one-tenth of one percent of, of the richest people in America. Okay? So, one-tenth of one percent have the same net worth as 90% of Americans. There's 300 million Americans. Seems fair. Seems fair, right? Now, again, I'm an immigrant, right? Yes, I created all this wealth by myself. I built companies, seven companies before Celsius. Raised over a billion dollars, had three billion in exits, but enough is enough. Now you hear people say that, right? You hear people on TV saying enough is enough. Ray Dalio, who's worth 16 billion dollars. 60 Minutes, anyone saw him on 60 Minutes? Saying enough is enough? Bill Gates, enough is enough, right? You see these people, but they're not really doing anything about it. Do you see them doing anything about it? Giving money to charity, I tried that. That's bullshit, okay? You want to disrupt this, you have to change the system. Crypto is changing the system. Crypto is moving from allowing the monopolies, just like the phone companies, allowing the monopolies to make all the profit. 1988, AT&T was the most profitable company in America. They made all their money from international voice settlement. Today they make zero. They make, they're losing money when you make an international phone call. Right? So the same thing could happen with banks. Right? So JP Morgan gives all of their profits to the shareholders. Celsius said, wait a second, why don't we charge the borrower, right? I'm the guy on the credit card. Why don't we charge him 9% instead of 25? And why don't we give 7% back to the depositor? 80% back to the depositor. Now, did you ever hear about that idea of giving back to the depositor 80% of the value the institution create? Anyone has done that before? Now, I guarantee you that JP Morgan can pay you 7% interest today and still make a profit. They just don't have to. They don't want to. So we are taking coins, stable coins, uh, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and we pay interest on it. Why? Because it's money. It's equivalent to money. We pay 7% on six stable coins. You can take all the money you want. Again, this what is are, not- What are the stable coins? We got CUSD, you got- uh, GUSD from Galaxy. Uh, USDC, that's from a circle backed by Goldman Sachs. You pay on DAI? We pay on DAI too, five and a half percent, yes. It's a good deal. So all you have to do is take your- How do I start doing this? How do I start getting it? You download the Celsius wallet, you deposit coins. We don't sell coins. You have to go buy them somewhere else. Is that on the uh, Microsoft store? It's on the, not Microsoft, but it's oh, on it's the Apple uh, or the Android store. Apple and Android, okay. <clears throat> yeah, we, Microsoft closed all the stores. They closed uh, their stores? Well, I mean for, for mobile apps. Okay, I didn't know. Yes, uh, they lost that battle. 
So, so, and this is again, you know, backstage, you know, David was asking me, well, wait a second, why, why are you giving so much back to the depositors? How are you making money at this, right? That's the instant question everybody asks. Well, guess what? Why, why is this conference half empty? Because all we've done in crypto is attracted a few hundred toll collectors. Everybody in this business is asking themselves how I'm making money, not how I'm helping seven and a half billion people on this planet. And that's why everybody in this business is just trying to take a piece out of the transaction on the way in, on the way out, while I'm waiting, while I'm going to the toilet. All right, I'll play, I'll play devil as, devil's really? advocate on that. Let's yeah. go. Okay, so over time. This industry please. is not gonna grow, just Let's, one second. This okay. industry is I, not I gonna grow. I let you speak for like 30 minutes. This conference is half full, not a half empty, first of all. Half full. S secondly, we have been moving forward in, with technology and as entrepreneurs and, and, and have never, never worried about people all around the world, but the, the lifestyle, the standard of living has continued to improve all around the world over hundreds of years. There's never been, you know, it's human nature. It's not like all of a sudden people are gonna change the way they are just because crypto exists now. And my, my argument is that if entrepreneurs continue to develop better tech, uh, the standard of living for the lowest level of person will continue to rise. First, I, I agree with you. I think the standard of living has improved dramatically. China added more people to the middle class than the entire population in the United States. India, right, is going to add more people to the middle class in the, around the world. Now the middle class there is ten to sixteen thousand dollars, right? It's not the fifty thousand dollars we are used to in the United States, but that's what's happening. It's happening with crypto, without crypto. That's not the point. The point is about wealth concentration, and we as a society, the United States of America, which I love. I came here because I love this country, right? I came here because this is where dreams are made true, right? For an immigrant without anything, I did not graduate Harvard. I did not graduate some fancy university, I'm a dropout, right? And this is where you can come with a dream, go to investors, say, hey, this is what I'm gonna build, and you can raise money and make it happen. You, can't, you still cannot do it almost anywhere else. So that dream is dying. That dream is dying. Half of Americans, 50% of Americans don't have $500 in case of emergency, okay? That is just not a system that works for everybody. So. You want to reinvent that, you have to break institutions. You have to break, just like we broke the phone companies, you have to break the banks. If the regulators are not going to do it, then we have to do it. And if we have to do it, we cannot do it. Look, VoIP was, uh, uh, Voice of IP, or the internet, not Voice of IP, the internet had about 600 million users when it was 10 years old. How many users do we have in crypto after 10 years? We just had a birthday party. I think it was 10, we have 10,000 users in crypto now? <laughs> we, we have about, I think, 46 million wallets. I have 10 wallets, right? N active users, maybe 16 million, 15 to 16 million. Half of it is in Bitcoin. So, more or less, again, very difficult to know what the real numbers are, but it's nothing compared to 600 million users the internet had when it was 10 years old. So, our rate of adoption is actually very slow. And any industry that doesn't get a scale dies off. Okay, we're at a critical, moment, right? This, it's called crossing the chasm. There's a Paul, famous book. Yeah, Paul has to become Saul. Yeah, so, so read the book and you can understand we had the first step was Bitcoin, second step was Ethereum, and now we don't have the third step. What are we doing next? What's gonna get us, what's gonna bring the next billion people to join us? Us shuffling coins to each other is not gonna do that. So you wanna reinvent the financial institutions? You need mass adoptions. What are you giving them? What are you giving these people? We're, we're giving them total so they can trade cryptocurrency. Great. Really. Trading is great for traders. Again, it's 7 billion good, people on the planet good. don't want to trade. It's also good for payments. I mean, maybe, or in, and lending. Maybe you want to borrow in a certain currency that I, you know, that I don't have. Maybe I want to pay back in a currency that you don't want. So there, there's definitely, a, there's opportunity for exchange in uh, providing real utility other than just trading. So we had 2,000 ICOs. These are all Cambrian you're, explosion you're of counting? innovation. Of, we are one of them. And experiments in every category you can think of, from, from uh, uh, you know, gambling to healthcare to everything you mentioned, right? Yep. And, and 
where is the traction? Show me one application that has amazing traction that's just going to bring the next billion people. Besides Celsius in total? Besides Celsius, yes. Um, good, it's a good question. Exactly. So the reason Celsius has adoption, we've, we've done over a billion in loans in nine months. Right? We have customers from over 120 Let's countries. Let's hear it for that. Billion loans in nine months. The reason is because we're giving everything back to the user. So we have customers from over 100 countries who come, put their even $10, right? They earn 7% in the country they earn nothing. Japan, Europe, the bank charge you to deposit money. There's negative interest rate. So suddenly, without doing anything, they can earn 7%, right? That's a killer app. Mm -hmm. That is trillions of dollars can move from the banks to a financial system that acts in the customer's best interest. Then the other side of it is borrowing, right? So people want to borrow. Everybody here wants to borrow at a lower rate, right? America has a trillion and a half dollars in credit card debt. The average rate in the United States is 24.7%. Most of the people here pay 24.7%. I got this one up here. I earn a fair interest rate on my money held in my personal savings account. We had 89% say false, 11% say true. So this hits right on the point. You feel that uh, banks are extrapolating, they're pulling too much out of that system. They can pay you 7% today. I I'm not, uh, look, people tell me, Alex, how'd so you, how you come up with this idea? That goes back to our previous question about people. I didn't come up with any idea. I just give 80% back to the user. I think that I deposit it. Don't you think that that's a problem with capitalism rather than the financial system? So, look, my kids, right, they don't want anything to do with banks. They don't want anything to do with credit cards. They don't want anything to do. They're looking for a different solution. And, and they're already there, right? They're, they're, they have tokens on all their games and stuff like that. For them, uh, whatever, a stable coin or Bitcoin is just another token. They don't see it as a different. In, in Seoul, Korea, 90% of people 35 or younger have cryptocurrency, 90%. In the United States, it's less than 10%, right? So we're just behind the curve uh, on this thing. Now, using crypto as, as a payment system, it has not worked. There's less merchants today accepting Bitcoin or Ethereum or any other coin than five years ago. We're going backwards. So again, I'm, look, I'm a, big, I'm a believer. I'm, I'm in this... 150%, right? I hold coins, but we, are the, we as an industry are not going in the right direction. That's all I'm trying to say. Well, wait, why, why is that? What's the, give, me the, give me the number one thing for the financial industry other than not, pro, not passing on. Is it just sucking out all of the value and providing it to the shareholders? That's it. Does that, to me, that's more capitalism than it is the financial system. Capitalism is great as long as it works for everybody. There's also the society component. So if you're, today, the largest companies in America are squeezing too much and they're not giving back enough. And that is a capitalist system, but it's just not working. So the, 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 the battle, the, the war is between centralized monopolies, the pyramids, right? The guy at the top, Jamie Dimon, at the top of JP Morgan, extract $30 billion from all of us, that's $5 for every person on the planet, every year. He makes $5 for every person on the planet every year. That's how rich this one company is, right? In a pyramid. And the, the battle, the war is between that and decentralization. What is decentralization? It's a system that acts in everybody's best interest. It's a system that measures how much you contribute to society versus how much did you earn in profit today. Right? So you have to decide as an individual, individual. You want to be on this side or you want to switch to the other side. Decentralization is a tsunami. It's washing the entire planet. And the young generation is already there. It just old farts like me are stuck on the pyramid side. Well, and we think we can keep extracting money from this side and it will never, have, it, it will never change. What, is, what does it look like as it goes forward and what's Celsius doing to participate in these new forms of finance that maybe aren't the same, you know, it's not based on you extracting all of this value. What is, yeah, t tell us about some of these plans for going forward and how you're approaching some of these younger generations. They're coming to us. We don't need to approach it. We don't advertise. You've never seen, anyone here saw an ad for Celsius? You have the little 
you have the little characters, the little. They, but we don't advertise. We don't go and spend millions. Of, how many bank ads do you see? A lot. A lot. Everywhere, right? So they need to convince you that you need to trust them and give them all your money because they're stealing from you every day. We don't need to convince everybody, anybody. So let's talk about transparency as an example, right? So Celsius in Q4 is going to start writing all of our transactions to the blockchain, right? So basically anyone, even someone who's not using Celsius, can come and audit us at any time. See how much we have on deposit, how many loans we issued, how much interest we collected. Did we actually give 80% back to the community or did we steal it and buy a Ferrari and we're driving it at nighttime so no one would see me driving a Ferrari, right? So that, that transparency does not exist. There is no financial institution today. Try, try it, go to the bank and your next deposit, say to the bank, I wanna know where my money goes. I wanna know what you do with my money. Who are you lending it to? How much you're earning? How much am I getting back? They'll laugh at you. They might even close your bank account just for asking the question. So the, the future that decentralized a financial institution is a fully transparent institution on the public blockchain. JP Morgan has a private blockchain, that doesn't count. It has to be a public blockchain, open ledger, consensus based, that is acting in the best interest of the community. Anyone here can tell me they have a bank or a broker or an insurance guy who's acting in your best interest? Not a single hand. That's, so, that's sad more than it is. No, but we know important. that. We just don't have an alternative. The only place we can deposit our money that we know is safe is with a bank. And it's designed that way. It's designed, these people, I have a chart in my presentation, you can see it online if you do a search. I think if you do uh, a search for uh, token 2049 Mashinsky, you will see the full presentation there and you can see, there's a slide that shows you how we used to have 30,000 banks and we're now down, the five largest banks in the United States now have like 70% of all the assets because they ate all the community banks. We didn't start, banks didn't start as bad boys. The community bank, your banker used to give you a mortgage, charge you interest, and use that interest to build a basketball court, or to help the guy with a gas station, or to bail out the pizza shop, right? Today, that's not how it works. The minute I give you a loan, that loan is sold to a guy in Germany, or in Japan, or somewhere else, the banker takes his commission, he takes his bonus, and you just paid for his new Mercedes, or you just paid for his vacation, or something else. They could care less about the community, and all those loans are sold overseas where there's a high demand for yield. In a, in a few words, tell me if you're not trying to provide ultimate value for shareholders, what is Celsius's ultimate goal? Well, our goal is to build the largest community. Our goal, we are successful if 100 million people, 200 million people, a billion people join crypto. Okay, so let's, again, I'm a VoIP guy. I've seen this movie before. Right? I know how it ends. So I'm here to tell you how this movie ends. In VoIP, how many people here have a, a WhatsApp account? Great. How much money did you pay WhatsApp? Anyone here ever paid anything to WhatsApp? WhatsApp got sold to Facebook for $22 billion. How can it be that they gave you all the value? They gave you everything. They did everything for their customers. They didn't ever charge you anything, and they be, were worth $22 To be 22 fair, we've billion. never paid Facebook anything either, though. I'm sorry? We've only paid them with our data and with our, you know. Facebook, you pay more than you know. They just, they, they just charge you differently. WhatsApp not taking your. WhatsApp, it, WhatsApp is exactly the model I'm talking about. We, we are closer to WhatsApp. We're closer to Costco. We're a membership organization, right? So our job, you just, yeah. we're killing two birds with one stone. We hope to really create the crypto community to make it succeed because it will only succeed if a few hundred million people join. So we get that by giving people a lot and we're creating value for ourselves only after we create a value for the community. If the community earns 7% and we become valuable and somebody comes and buys us 10 years from now, 20 years from now, then we win as well. But we don't win until then, right? So th there's no scenario where I 
somehow steal fees in the middle and and make myself rich and the community lost. Got it. So it's a product of the community's success, is Celsius success. And we have several of these. Like in the in on in the internet revolution, in the first wave, the first 25 years, there are many examples like WhatsApp. It's not just one example. So so crypto needs to take these lessons, not the lessons of I can charge tolls in every possible way and fees and whatever. Celsius doesn't charge any fees. You 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 find a customer, anyone, who will tell you, I paid Celsius a fee, right? You'll never find, we don't charge any fees. We have to create income by lending it for more than what we're paying the depositor. So if we pay you seven, we have to lend it at nine, 10, 11, but we give 80% back, that's unheard of. That's, that's a piece, now, it's not hard, this is not, all we're doing is taking what they're giving to the shareholders and we're giving it to the depositor. It's just revolutionary. Seems like a, seems like a great opportunity for uh, users. Get some, sure. get some interest Let's on there. Let's open it up. Got some questions? Anybody have any questions? We can, uh, there's a mic right over here on this side if there's any or questions. answers. You got answers, we'll take yeah, them answers too. are good too. The question was, is, is there a Celsius token? So we did, we, we started in 16, we did an ICO in 18, March 18th, we raised uh, close to $50 million and uh, we have a sell token, we got to be listed in ex on an exchange. We did not list like everybody else, Russian list on an exchange as fast as possible. We did not give any, we did not sell any of our tokens to VCs or fat cats and give them 60, 70, 80% discount. All of our participants came from many, many different countries and they came because they wanted us to build this platform. So we finished the ICO in March, we launched the project in, uh, in the product in June and we were basically organically grew to about 70,000 users. We have over 100 million in deposits. So people gave us $100 million worth of coins and we lent that out at least 10 or 15 times. So we lent each coin 10 or 15 times to different institutions. So we have two parts to our business. One is the lending and interest payment, and the second part is lending coins to market makers. These are exchanges that need coin to just operate their exchanges, or hedge funds that need coin to operate their businesses. Sometimes they short, sometimes they hedge, sometimes they do tax trades. Sometimes people come to us and borrow Bitcoin, they give us Bitcoin as deposit and they borrow Bitcoin. And people go like, what are you talking about? Why would somebody give you Bitcoin and borrow Bitcoin? Well, if they sold their Bitcoin, they would have to pay tax. Most of these guys got their Bitcoin at six, seven hundred dollars. But if they deposit their Bitcoin as collateral and they borrow Bitcoin, your Bitcoin, they don't have to pay tax on that, they just pay tax on the game. So there's a, ta a tax neutral transaction for hedge funds but they pay us six or 7% for that borrow. We give 80% of that back to the community. Today, you deposit Bitcoin, you earn 5.1%. The sell token, to go back to your question, sell token is used, if you have sell token, you basically get more interest from us as a depositor, and you get a discount when you take a loan, instead of paying 9%, you pay 8% or things like that. So it's used to basically as a, as a utility to help you uh, earn more and pay less. Thank <laughs> you.